Hey, what's up guys, so you know what's best here. Samsung has officially unveiled their two new flagship phones, the Samsung Galaxy S6 and the S6 Edge. And here are my first impressions of both of these phones. First off, the design is great. Both of these phones feature Gorilla Glass 4 on the front and the back, and it's just a very premium design where they use very lightweight materials, but they feel solid, they feel durable, and when you put them in your hand, it's a very nice grip, and I was a little bit worried about the glass being a little bit slippery, but that wasn't the case with the both of these phones. And color options, you have white pearl, black sapphire, gold platinum, blue topaz, and with the S6 Edge, you have a green emerald option, which is one of the ones that really stand out when you hear green on the cell phone. It doesn't really sound like it will work, but this definitely does work on the S6 Edge. Now, the expense of making these phones look and feel better you don't have the option to remove your battery anymore and also you don't have the option to expand your storage with a micro sd card now both of these phones have 5.1 inch quad hd super amoled displays that have a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and a rocking 577 ppi but the one difference with the S6 Edge is that it's a curved display on both sides and it looks absolutely amazing because you don't have this sharp cutoff when you're watching a video. Uh, the video can fold over and basically it just allows you to be a little bit more immersed into what you're watching on the display. And it's just something you really have to see. I don't know if this camera could even do it justice. Once you see it in real life, you'll see all the sharp and vivid details you're able to get out of a great looking video on a great display that's on the S6 Edge. And again, it still looks just just as good on the Galaxy S6, but that curved display is just something that's very unique that allows you to, again, just to get a little bit more into the content that you're watching. When it comes to battery of life, the S6 has a 2,550 milliamp battery, where the S6 Edge has a 2,600 milliamp battery, but both feature wireless charging and just better uh, compatibility with WPC and PMA wireless charging pads. So basically any charging pad out there for the most part, you'll be able to use. And if you do want to charge it the old way by using a wire, it's gonna be about 1.5 times faster than the S5. So that basically equates to just by plugging it in for 10 minutes, you'll get about four hours of usage. Now last year Samsung introduced a fingerprint scanner with the Galaxy S5, but you had to swipe your finger down, which really wasn't the best method. But now they improved that by allowing you just to have to touch your finger on the home button, very similar to what Touch ID is on the iPhone, but you simply just touch your finger down and it will quickly unlock your phone. Now camera wise, both of these phones feature five megapixel front facing cameras that have a wider field of view so you can get a lot more people in for your selfies. And the rear facing camera is a 16 megapixel shooter with OIS, optical image stabilization. It also has quick launch now, so no matter what you're doing in the software, you can double tap the home button and it will launch the camera pretty quickly so you can go ahead and take a picture of that moment right when you need it. And now it does have infrared detect white balance, improved low light video, and also tracking autofocus. So that means if you wanna keep one subject in your video in focus, you simply tap on them now, and you'll be able to keep them in focus as they move around and you pan your camera around. This is a feature that you see in digital cameras, but it's coming to these two new Galaxy phones. Now moving on to software, both of these phones are running Android 5.0 Lollipop, and of course they do have TouchWiz on top of that. And one of my biggest complaints about TouchWiz in the past is that it was just way too much. It just felt a little too bloated. Um, and this Samsung was just trying to throw everything in there and the kitchen sink, but they have dialed that back now with these two new phones. And I'm really enjoying it because the settings are just a little bit more organized. Everything is just a little bit more concise and it's just less is more. And that really is working now uh, with this new version of TouchWiz. And there's also better multitasking. You can have multiple apps running at the same time. And then if you just want to get rid of them, you can minimize them into these little bubbles and move those bubbles around on your screen. But what about the S6 Edge? How does this software take advantage of the curved displays on this new phone? Well, one thing is that if you do swipe over from the right-hand side, you'll see a list of your favorite contacts. And they can be family members or friends, but you can tap on them and you'll have a few different quick actions it's like texted them right away. Um, and also you can assign them different colors. Now, why would you want to assign them a color? Well, with the S6 Edge, if you were to place it face down on a desk and you walk away and somebody was to send you a text message, it will light up in red or blue, whatever colors you assign to them. So you can know exactly who's trying to contact you without having to run over to your phones. And real quick, a couple extra things. Samsung will be releasing an updated version of their Gear VR that will work with the S6 and the X6 Edge. And also they announced Samsung Pay, which is a mobile payment system that doesn't require one of those NFC terminals. You can actually use it with the conventional Mac Stripe terminals, which are pretty much everywhere that you use to swipe your credit card. So Samsung has more information about that, and they'll be releasing that later on in the summer. 
And so with this hardware and the software, Samsung is really trying to make a statement that they're here to stay, that they're going to continue to be innovative. And again, just with my little time with both of these phones, it looks like they're on the right track. And I think they do have two winners on their hands. But again, these are just my first impressions of these two phones. They launched worldwide on April the 10th. But stay tuned for more coverage and definitely leave a comment down below what you think about these two phones. They've been talked about for a while. I'm interested to see what you think about them. But like always, thanks for watching this video, guys, and I will catch you later. Peace. Verivox.de. Da sparen Sie mit Sicherheit. Samsung hat hier auf dem Mobile World Congress wie erwartet das Galaxy S6 und S6 Edge vorgestellt. Technisch handelt es sich eigentlich um identische Geräte. Mit dem ganz kleinen Unterschied beim Edge, Nomen est Omen, dass halt hier der Bildschirm diesmal auf beiden Seiten so ganz leicht um den Rand herum geht. Das kennen wir ja schon vom Note 4. Da war das noch ein bisschen größer, jetzt aber dafür auf beiden Seiten. Und dieses Edge-Display, das hat gleich mehrere Vorteile. Zum einen kann man ja hier auch zusätzliche Informationen, die werden hier über dieses Rubbeln da ganz kurz aufgerufen, kann man zusätzliche Informationen einblenden. Allerdings nicht wie beim Note. Äh, 4, hier beispielsweise Apps, diese Schnellzugriffe, dafür ist einfach der Platz hier zu klein. Oder dafür gibt es jetzt einen zweiten Trick aber, hier oben, man kann da erkennen, ist so ein leichter Karteireiter zu sehen, wenn man den ausfährt, kommen hier die fünf am häufigsten benutzten Kontakte zum Vorschein und denen kann man dann verschiedene Farben zuweisen. Das läuft hier oben über die Einstellung, man kann sich das vorstellen. Hintergrund ist, wenn man jetzt beispielsweise in einem Meeting ist, äh, in der Regel liegt dann ja das Telefon so, damit es stumm geschaltet ist mit dem Bauch auf dem Tisch, kann man dann trotzdem, wenn ein Anruf eingeht, anhand der Farbe hier erkennen, wer ruft da jetzt an und sogar hier über einen Druck auf den Pulsmesser, auch den kennen wir ja schon von Samsung, kurz drauf drücken, dann geht da automatisch eine vorgefertigte SMS raus, tut mir leid, bin im Meeting, ruf gleich zurück oder was auch immer. Also das sind so ein paar Geschichten, die man hier machen kann. Aber es geht natürlich auch ein bisschen um neue Technologie, völlig klar. Und man erkennt das vielleicht auch schon an dieser sehr dünnen Bauweise. Samsung redet da von 6,8 mm. Da ist natürlich jetzt leider Gottes kein Platz erstens für einen SD-Kartenslot. Das hier oben ist nämlich nur für die SIM-Karte gedacht, hier auf der Seite. Das heißt, es gibt tatsächlich keinen SD-Kartenslot mehr. Man kann den Speicher nicht erweitern. Dafür, jetzt die gute Nachricht, gibt es 32, 64 und festhalten 128 GB internen Speicher. Ja, und damit sollte dann auch, glaube ich, der intensivste Nutzer zu Rande kommen, weil 128 GB, das ist schon eine Menge. Wichtig dabei ist natürlich jetzt der Preis. Den hat Samsung hier noch nicht genannt. Da müssen wir dann einfach mal abwarten, die nächsten Tage, was da noch kommen mag. Und außerdem ist die Batterie nicht mehr auswechselbar. Das war ja immer der große Vorteil bei Samsung. Jetzt hier auch fest verbaut. Soll aber eine ganz neue Technologie sein, obwohl es nur 2600 mAh sind. Zum Vergleich der Vorgänger 2800. Trotzdem steckt jetzt der hauseigene Exynos-Prozessor ähm, darunter. Exynos 7, 64-Bit-Unterstützung, Octa-Core. Leider verrät Samsung hier nicht, mit wie viel Gigahertz die äh, getaktet sind. Meistens sind es ja vier höher getaktete, vier niedrigere getaktete. Hier wissen wir es jetzt einfach noch nicht. Das ist ein großes Betriebsgeheimnis offenbar. Müssen wir mal abwarten, auch die nächsten Tage. Der soll jedenfalls sehr viel weniger Strom verbrauchen als sein Vorgänger. Und damit will man sogar noch längere Laufzeiten erreichen. Standby-Zeiten, Talktime-Zeiten oder Musikwiedergabe, was auch immer. Das müssen wir natürlich dann alles mal testen, sobald die finalen Geräte da sein werden. Das soll dann ab 10. April der Fall sein. Ja, zum Display von der Auflösung wollte ich noch mal ganz kurz was sagen. Das war ja im Vorwege auch eigentlich schon bekannt. 5,1 Zoll ist geblieben. Wie gesagt, bei beiden Geräten alles absolut identisch. Hier haben wir halt noch so ein bisschen die Kanten, die dazukommen. Und von der Auflösung her sind es 1440 mal 2560 Pixel. Und damit komme ich auf diese extrem hohe Pixeldichte von 577 ppi. Also ein super scharfes Bild, gehört mit zu den Besten. Das muss man jetzt natürlich dann auch erstmal in der Praxis schauen, wie sich das dann auf, den, auf die Prozessorleistung und auf die Akkuleistung auswirken. Aber angeblich soll das alles gar kein Problem sein für diesen Superprozessor. Warten wir es mal ab. 
Ich habe hier noch mal kurz nach hinten geschwenkt, weil ich noch was über die Kamera sagen wollte. Die schießt zwar Fotos weiterhin mit 16 Megapixels, Video wieder in 4K, ja, aber soll sehr viel lichtstärker geworden sein. Man sieht auch so ein ganz kleines bisschen schon, dass es etwas größer geworden ist, aber damit soll man jetzt bis zu 50 Prozent mehr Licht rausholen können. Das heißt sowohl Fotos als auch Videos und Zusammenspiel mit dem optischen Bildstabilisator, der also mechanisch dieses Wackeln verhindert. Da sollen jetzt noch sehr viel bessere Bilder, obwohl die äh, reine nominale Auflösung bei 16 Megapixel gleich geblieben ist soll das dann deutlich optimieren und die Frontkamera, die soll jetzt auch mit f1,9 sehr viel mehr Licht einfangen. Deswegen hat man auch hier vorne sich den, das Front-LED-Licht gespart ähm, und hat 5 Megapixel und übrigens Videos auch in QHD. Das heißt, diese 1440 x 2560 Pixel ist hier auch die Videoauflösung auf der Front. Ja, und last but not least, da hat Samsung eigentlich gar nicht große Worte hier drüber verloren auf dieser Vorstellung. Es gibt natürlich wieder hier unter dem äh, mechanischen Home-Button den Fingerabdruck-Scanner. Äh, da muss man jetzt aber nicht mehr ziehen wie beim Vorgänger, sondern es reicht halt einfach darauf aus, dass man das drauflegt. Da fehlt uns jetzt die Zeit hier, das mal äh, auszuprobieren. Aber wir bekommen ja bald dann auch die finalen Geräte zugeschickt. Da können wir noch mal näher darauf eingehen. Soweit, ja, einmal muss ich aber, glaube ich, noch ganz kurz, bevor ich hier ende, ähm, äh, zu sprechen komme auf das S6, das ähm, ein bisschen, ja, wie gesagt, etwas anders anmutet, aber im Prinzip technisch gleich ist. Und wenn das hier so ein bisschen blau schimmert, das täuscht. Das soll angeblich tatsächlich schwarz Anthrazit sein. Beide Geräte übrigens vorne und hinten Gorilla Glas 4. Aber da muss man natürlich auch sagen, ich bin hier permanent am Putzen schon. Man sieht natürlich jeden Fingerabdruck hier auf Glas. Das kennen wir ja schon. Super edel. Aber das ist was für Wischfreunde dann natürlich an dieser Stelle. Das wollte ich jetzt auch nochmal losgeworden sein. Aber ansonsten natürlich sehr handlich, sehr schick durch diesen Metallrahmen hier. Die haben durchaus schon Sex Appeal. Das muss ich zugeben. So, das soll es jetzt aber wirklich gewesen sein. Hier als erster Eindruck vom S6 und S6 Edge aus Barcelona vom Mobile World. World Congress. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen. Bis bald. Verivox.de. Da sparen Sie mit Sicherheit. Verivox.de. Da sparen Sie mit Sicherheit. Wie man unschwer erkennen kann, S6 auf der linken Seite, S6 Edge Plus. Man sieht es natürlich schon, ein riesen Bildschirm von 5,1 Zoll, jetzt auf 5,7 Zoll angewachsen. Und das ist eigentlich auch schon die größte Neuerung, muss man sagen, dass man jetzt hier einfach auf der Seite ein bisschen mehr Platz auch hat für diese Apps. Wenn man das jetzt hier mal, ver Ups, wenn man das jetzt hier mal vergleicht beispielsweise nochmal, dann merkt man halt, ja, das macht schon ein Deutsch deutlichen Unterschied aus. Jetzt ist es für mich hier als Rechtshänder ein bisschen schwierig, das Ganze hier vor der Kamera mit links zu organisieren. Also so kann man es, glaube ich, jetzt einigermaßen erkennen nebeneinander. So wird es dann hoffentlich gehen und jetzt verschwindet der hier wieder. Ja, es ist halt hochsensitiv, nicht ganz so einfach. Und vor allen Dingen muss man natürlich sagen, es ist vom Design jetzt auch her ja, äh, relativ ähnlich gehalten, wie man unschwer erkennen kann. Das war ja sozusagen die S6-Linie auch. Und jetzt gibt es das neue Modell mit großem Bildschirm. Allerdings muss man auch wissen, Akku jetzt 3000 mAh statt 2600. Das macht natürlich schon was aus. Muss man jetzt gucken, wie das bei dem großen Bildschirm sich auswirkt. Ansonsten ist es eigentlich von der Hardware relativ gleich geblieben. Also wir haben den identischen Prozessor, wieder den Exynos 7420, bedeutet acht Kerne, davon vier mit 2,1 und vier mit 1,5 Gigahertz. Äh, wir haben jetzt ähm, ansonsten vom Arbeitsspeicher her einen kleinen Zuwachs bekommen, dass wir jetzt bei 4 Gigabyte angelangt sind statt 3. Ja, und ansonsten, ja, Maße ist natürlich ganz klar sehr viel größer und dass wir jetzt äh, über 133 50 Gramm reden, äh, ist eigentlich verwunderlich, weil, wenn man sich das hier mal so anguckt, von, von den Größen selbst her, das macht jetzt so viel irgendwie nicht aus, weil, ähm, wenn man dann nochmal schaut, 132 Gramm und jetzt 155, das ist jetzt nicht so dieser Riesenunterschied, muss ich sagen, also 153, pardon, habe ich da gerade noch versprochen, also das geht eigentlich, finde ich, dafür, dass der Bildschirm jetzt dann doch auch deutlich größer ist, ähm, kann sich das sehen lassen. Ja, große Preisfrage, was ist der Preis? Ja, 
hm, große Frage. In der Tat, denn wir wissen nur, es wird eine 32 und eine 64 Gigabyte Version geben, was mit 128 Gigabyte ist. Keine Ahnung. Wir wissen auch, dass es im August kommen soll und auch in Deutschland kommen soll. Das heißt auf jeden Fall vor dem Note 5. Aber alles andere werden wir später noch mal klären müssen. Ganz zum Abschluss noch ein Wort zur Kamera, denn hier hat sich einiges getan. Da muss man ja sagen, okay, wir hatten ja sowieso schon 16 Megapixel optischen Image-Stabilisator, Bildstabilisator. Jetzt hat Samsung noch ein eigenes System, digitales da oben drauf gelegt, das auch bei der Frontkamera zum Einsatz kommt. Hier halt natürlich kein optischer Stabilisator, nennt sich Video Digital Image Stabilizer. Also so einfach nochmal Bildqualität vorn und hinten und Fotos und Videos gleichermaßen erhöhen. Und es gibt natürlich auch noch jede Menge neue Funktionen dazu. Sowas wie Slow Motion, Live-Übertragung von Videos zu YouTube. Und vor allen Dingen, was ich persönlich interessant finde, dass man die Audioqualität hochskalieren kann. Also wenn ich einen MP3-File einfach aufs Handy ablege, dann soll der quasi in Studioqualität wiedergegeben werden. Heißt für Fachleute mit 24 Bit 192 Kilohertz. Da bin ich natürlich schon mal auf den Test gespannt. Ja, und was die Preise betrifft, müssen wir dann einfach mal abwarten, was Samsung dann bis äh, zur Verfügbarkeit noch durchsickern lässt. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen. Bis bald. Verivox.de. Da sparen Sie mit Sicherheit. Надо сказать, что э, осталось распознавание отпечатка пальца для того, чтобы таким образом разблокировать телефон и в Galaxy S6, и в Galaxy S6 Edge это есть. Давайте посмотрим на одном аппарате, как это работает. Э, функция осталась, но в корне переработали подходы. Если в прошлом году э, вот это распознавание, ну, не сказать, что нас сильно радовало, оно было не всегда корректным и было очень неудобно это все делать. То есть сейчас э, жизнь-то, в общем-то, наладилась. А, заходим в пункт э, распознавания отпеча отпечатков и, соответственно, добавляем палец. В прошлом году нужно было вот так вот проводить, и тогда вот он считывал. В этом году все совершенно иначе происходит. Похоже на iPhone, но происходит это гораздо дольше. Вот посмотрите сами в режиме реального времени. Нужно достаточно много прикосновений, чтобы в память внести все-все-все подробности вашего драгоценного пальца. Долго и мучительно мы это все дело добавляем, но зато, зато потом все будет очень круто, быстро распознаваться. И он точно узнает ваш палец. Вот, соответственно, мы добавили его, включили блокировку. Посмотрим, как это работает. Для начала попробуем использовать другой палец, не который заводили в память. Телефон напишет, что, мол, удостоверьтесь, точно ли палец находится на сканере. Берем правильный палец, прикладываем, все идеально распознается. Вообще никаких нареканий, происходит это быстро, качественно и не больно. Итак, идем дальше. Здесь, как мы уже отметили, загнутый экран. Выглядит очень интересно. Круто. Сразу видно, что какое-то неординарное устройство привлекает внимание. Но кроме того, что он привлекает внимание, смартфон, как вы помните, у Note 4 Edge только одна сторона экрана была загнута. Здесь загнули две стороны, и, соответственно, полосочку со всякими нотификациями можно выводить по обе стороны. Сейчас я покажу, как это делать. Во-первых, заходим в настройки экрана. Что мы можем делать, да? Мы можем видеть, когда нам звонят, если телефон перевернут, индикация световая происходит, когда мы получаем сообщение, то же самое от избранных контактов, и, соответственно, ленточка с информацией от тех источников, которые вы выбрали, плюс часы, да, для того, чтобы не будить весь экран и не освещать всю комнату, если вы хотите узнать, сколько время ночью, можно посмотреть вот таким вот образом. Как это работает? А, и самое главное, самое главное, мы можем, мы можем выбрать позицию справа-слева. Да? Это в зависимости от того, левша вы или правша, с какой вам стороны нравится. То есть у вас есть выбор. В прошлый раз в, в случае на no Edge этого выбора не было. Если ты левша, ты все равно должен пользоваться правой стороной. Сейчас есть выбор, это прекрасно. Выбор вообще всегда хорошо. А, смотрим дальше. А, здесь есть... Ну, Во-первых, 
Идем дальше, смотрим в работе, работу этих информационных полосочек. Вот у нас экран выключен. Слегка поводили его, получили часы, текущую погоду, заряд батареи и число день недели. Соответственно, если вот так пролистать, можно посмотреть, есть ли какие-то свежие нотификации. Таким вот образом обновляется информация из новостей, в данном случае новости Яху. Давайте еще раз покажу, как это работает. Вот, допустим, экран выключен, вы проснулись, захотели узнать, сколько время, отерли, телефон проснулся. Но это не все полезное, что может полосочка. А, например, мы идем в специальный эмулятор, где демонстрируется, что происходит, когда вам звонят или пишут. Итак, у вас есть список из людей, с которыми вы общаетесь чаще. Это близкие друзья, это муж, жена, мама, бабушка и так далее. Вы можете их завести в специальный список, и каждому присвоит свой цвет. Допустим, представьте, что вам звонит подруга, но вы сидите в каком-то тихом месте, где нельзя разговаривать, нельзя включать звук телефона. Он у вас лежит лицом вниз. И вот таким вот образом, не поднимая даже телефона, не глядя на него, вы можете узнать, что вам звонит, например, Маша или Лена, потому что она подсвечивается оранжевым. Оранжевый – это ее цвет. То же самое произойдет, если Лена или Маша напишут вам смс -ку. А если, например, это ваш друг, то ему свойственно другой цвет. Если, например, вы пришли пообщаться с подружками, и они вам настрого запретили вообще прикасаться к смартфону и проверять Инстаграм с Фейсбуком, вы переворачиваете телефон, но точно не пропустите, например, его звонок, потому что такая красивая индикация волнами, она подскажет, что звонит он и рекомендуется ответить. Ну, можно, например, такой звонок еще на начальника поставить, чтобы не пропускать такие важные звонки. Такая вот история. Камера Galaxy S6 Edge такая же, как у Galaxy S6. То есть такая же прекрасная, 16 мегапикселей, съемка в Ultra HD, более крупные пиксели, шустрый автофокус. Вообще очень хорошая показательная работа. Если захотите сделать, например, селфи, вот, можно вот так на себя направить и на индикатор, вот на этот сенсор, приложить палец, когда вы будете готовы, то есть когда лицо ваше распознается, можно просто приложить, чтобы не вызывать никаких лишних э, колебаний телефона, сотрясаний, чтобы картинка не размазалась. Первыми впечатлениями о новинке Samsung с вами поделилась Анна Феоктистова и помогал ей в этом Павел Терехин специально для Hi-Tech Mail.ru. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here with Troy Life. Time to whip through our 25 tips and tricks for Samsung's new Galaxy S6. Uh, for those new to Droid Life, the 25 Tips and Tricks series is something we created years ago. It's basically our way of highlighting a whole bunch of stuff you can do on your brand new, really expensive phone to hopefully help you get the most out of it. Uh, so since the Galaxy S6 is probably going to be, you know, a phone of the year candidate, you guys need to know how to use this bad boy. Now, if you have the Galaxy S6 Edge, all of this stuff is going to apply as well. All of this stuff should work. But if you do have the Edge, you'll probably have some extra features and stuff like that. So look for another video shortly uh, that will cover maybe some of those S6 Edge specific stuff. But again, this stuff works on the S6 and the Edge. Uh, so let's get right into this. We got 25, at least 25 of these things. So the first thing I want to talk about is the home button. So it is a fingerprint sensor or scanner, whatever you want to call it. And it's actually a good one. So unlike the S5 and Note 4 that required a swipe, this one, you just set your finger on there and it unlocks. Uh, it's really quick. It's really good. You should be using it. You have no excuse not to. Um, before we get back into using it though, let's jump into uh, settings and then lock screen and security. And this is where you would set it up. So you would choose lock screen type uh, and then you would choose fingerprints as your option. And while you're going through this the first time, it's gonna walk you through and say set up fingerprints. If you wanna add fingerprints later on, you tap on fingerprints in the same settings area. And uh, you can see here a fingerprint one and two, you can add more. Uh, I currently have both thumbs set up since I tend to pick my phone up and press the home button and with either thumb. So that's kind of my setup. The nice thing is you could add fingerprints for say your wife or your brother or somebody else that you want to give access to your phone to. 
uh, and then you can still keep it secure, but then they could use it if they need to, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, another thing down here is web sign in. You can use it to uh, remember your passwords and things like on the web or uh, verifying Samsung account. Most of us have a Samsung account, but we probably don't know what the password is because it's something we never access. If you have this turned on and you're prompted to use uh, your Samsung password, you can just use your thumb instead, which is kind of a handy little feature. Uh, so again, you set that up in lock screen and security. And again, once you have it set up, it's just one of those things. You pick up your phone, press home, your thumb's already there, you might as well have it secured with your fingerprint. So even if you're one of those people, and I'm, I tend to be one of those that doesn't usually use a secure lock screen, you might as well with this phone, just because you're pressing home to wake your phone anyway, leave your thumb on there and unlocks it. So really handy feature and it works really, really well on this device. All right, so the next thing is launching the camera. So other than unlocking your phone all the time, the other thing you probably do a lot is shoot pictures. This phone has an insanely good and fast camera, so you're gonna want use it a lot so the fastest way to launch that is double tap on home twice opens up your camera and you can then take a picture uh, so you can do that with the phone off as you notice i just did there so black screen phone completely locked state double tap home launches the camera uh, the cool thing is you can also do this from within say your app drawer or if you're in chrome or you're doing something else you can do this from anywhere on the phone just double tap the home button and it launches the camera and then you can shoot it's that fast it's that simple it's one of the probably the number two trick i could probably tell you uh, after that let's jump into some user interface type of stuff so if you're a big google now user you hold down on home for a second or so that launches Google Now. Uh, it's really simple. Again, you can do that from anywhere as well, including the, the, uh, the app drawer. Uh, like other Samsung devices, this Galaxy S6 has multi-window. So you can do two apps at the same time on your screen. Uh, basically, you just hold down the app switcher button and it will pop up the menu and it'll let you choose which apps you want to use. So let's say I want to use Chrome um, and then uh, swipe over and let's say I want to use Instagram. So I can have both of those running. Obviously, I've got nothing popping up because I'm in airplane mode for the video, but you get the point. You have Instagram here and you could scroll around in there. Uh, I have Chrome up here so I could do some things in Chrome. Uh, if you want to adjust things, there's a button right in the middle that allows you to flip flop these screens. If you want to flip flop those, you can also tap on this button to um, shrink one down. You can see it sort of goes into this little bubble here then it pops up as its own little window. Um, so you, you've got a bunch of options in here. This isn't really new to Samsung devices at all. It's been around for years, but I just want to make sure you guys know that it is here as well. So multi-window is back again. Again, a long press on the app switcher gets you right into there. All right, so the next thing is up in your notification area, you have all of these quick toggles which Samsung has uh, also had around for a long time. But one thing you may not know is you can long press on these and they will actually pop into that entire settings menu. So uh, if you're up here and you wanna get on a Wi-Fi network, you would just long press on that and you can turn it on um, and then you can also scroll through and find uh, you know, a, a specific network that you're looking for. The cool thing is you can do this with everything. So like your Bluetooth, you could jump in, look at all your Bluetooth options. And then one of my favorite is actually the uh, vibration settings, which is, it's just in sound, I believe. So we long press on sound and that gets you into all of your sound modes and profiles. And if we go into vibrations, uh, vibration intensity is something I tweak with all Samsung phones. And Samsung is one of the only, the few that does this. Uh, but basically you can adjust the intensity of the vibrate for specific things. So I leave incoming calls. I leave my phone on vibrate a lot because I have a child and I don't want to wake him up. So I have my calls set on the most intense vibrate setting, but notifications, I don't necessarily need my phone vibrating off a table when an email comes in. So I sort of set those down a little bit lower. So they're not quite as crazy. And then vibration feedback is typing and using the uh, soft key. So you can kind of adjust that as you want. But vibration intensity is something I try to show everyone that has a Samsung device just because it's uh, such a cool little thing. Um, so speaking of settings, so let's jump in and accessing settings is that button right up top there. Uh, Samsung's added this really cool section that I've been using like crazy. And they're basically quick settings in your settings. So these are quick settings toggles. Uh, these are quick settings settings, if, if that makes any sense. Uh, anyways, you can display up to nine settings in this area. 
And if you look, you know, Samsung still has its massive list of settings. Uh, but you can set up your most favorite, uh, your, your most used up here. You just hit edit and it gives you a whole bunch of different things that you can touch. So I could add a ringtone and do not disturb if I want. Um, and go back here and now you can see I've got more stuff added. So uh, I have a shortcut to battery. I also have one to, uh, well, not normally sound notifications, but lock screen. You notice I accessed that for the fingerprint stuff. So you can really just sort of keep all your favorite settings right there, like about device in case you want to hammer on the software update button and things like that. So really handy feature they added that I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting to love and I actually use quite often. All right, so display modes would be one of the next things I wanna show you, and I've changed up all my things. There we go, display modes. So if we go into screen mode and display settings, uh, Samsung really lets you uh, take advantage of the AMOLED punchiness, if you will. And so I have mine set to adaptive display, where the display tries to sort of change depending on the experience uh, it thinks I should get. Uh, but if you wanna just go crazy AMOLED, um, blow out all the colors, you have a couple of AMOLED modes, which are kind of fun. Like AMOLED cinema, everything just gets crazy vibrant and contrast and all over the place in color. Uh, there's also a basic mode if you just want to look pretty standard. Uh, I tend to leave it in adaptive display, but if you really want to adjust those modes, especially if you're watching a movie or something, you might want to, might want to jump in there. All right, so if we go back to settings, so I wanna point out that Download Booster is on here as well. So Download Booster, if you turn that on and you're using Wi-Fi and you're on LTE, if you download a big file, uh, 30 megabytes or over, it uses a combo of Wi-Fi and LTE to really download stuff incredibly fast. So if you're downloading a lot of stuff, you may wanna consider turning on um, Download Booster. Um, so if we're still in settings here, motions and gestures, so Samsung includes a number of motions and gestures. Direct call is an option where if you're looking at a contact for someone, you can just hold the phone up to your face and it will call them. Um, mute, uh, if incoming call is coming over, you can flip your phone over or I believe just wave your hand over it now. Yep, place your hand over your phone or flip it over, one or the other. Uh, there's also a palm swipe, which is a swiping gesture that works like this, where it'll capture the screen. I always turn that off because I've had that go off way too many times without me wanting it. The one that I do keep on is smart alert. So smart alert, if you haven't touched your phone for a while, say you're in a meeting and you come back to it and you pick it up, it will notice that you've picked it up and it will then sort of vibrate and tell you that you have missed calls and messages and things like that. So it's kind of a cool little thing. Um, whoops back into settings. So do not disturb mode is something that used to be called blocking mode. Let me see if I can, if I can find it here. Oh, there it is. Do not disturb mode. So it used to be called blocking mode. Now it's called do not disturb mode. Uh, anyways, it, you, you understand the idea. You basically put your phone in a state where you do not want to be disturbed. Uh, so the cool thing is you can set a schedule though. So I have mine to turn on at midnight and turn back off at 6am. So during those hours, I don't get any messages or notifications, nothing comes through. Well, they're still coming to my phone, but it's not telling me that those are coming through. So it's kind of like quiet time, really really handy deal. You can also set it up for exceptions uh, so that alarms always still come through or calls always come through or your favorite people are, are still able to contact you. Uh, so next thing I wanna talk about is the keyboard. So I'm not a big fan of Samsung's keyboard. So if you wanna turn that off, I would go in and download Google's keyboard because it's great or Swift key or swipe or uh, there's a whole bunch of them out there. So anyway, I would download a third party keyboard. Um, once you've done that, this is where you would change it is just in language and input um, where you can set up what your default keyboard is. Uh, one of the cool things is you can actually turn off, let's see if I can find it. You can actually turn off Samsung's keyboard, which is kind of nuts to think. Um, and of course I can't find the setting as I'm trying to tell you guys about it, but you can actually turn off Samsung's keyboard forever and it will, won't show up as an option, which is, which is interesting. Uh, let's, so let's see, smart lock is another thing I wanna talk about. So if we go into lock screen settings and then secure lock settings, you'll notice an option called smart lock. So smart lock was introduced by Google uh, with Lollipop. And basically what that means is if you're attached to a Bluetooth device, say a Moto 360 or maybe something, maybe your phone, or I'm sorry, your car, or something like that. You can have it set so that it will bypass and leave your phone unlocked during that time when it's connected to those devices. Uh, but should you leave your phone behind or leave uh, your car, your phone will go back to being locked. But it's kind of one of those convenience things, like it knows that it's on you. And so you can have it 
uh, uh, stay unlocked uh, at the right time. So there's trusted devices. You can also have trusted places work, which means when you arrive home, your lock screen uh, is no longer secure. Uh, but when you leave and go out to work or something, it would then relock itself. So a really cool feature that we talk about a lot. Uh, let's see. So screen pinning is another feature introduced with Lollipop and Samsung has kind of hidden it. So if you're in the lock screen and security and we go into other security settings, I believe we scroll all the way to the bottom. There is a pin window section. So pinning a window means if I hit the app switcher and I scroll up a little bit here, you should see a little pin option down here. So if I tap that pin option, I can then pin a screen on the screen so that if I handed my device to somebody else, they wouldn't be able to access anything else except that screen. Uh, one of the cool things you can do is ask for a fingerprint before unpinning. So if I click start on this, this screen is now pinned. So you can see if I hit home, it's not leaving the screen. So you actually have to hold down app switcher and back at the same time. And uh, if I'm doing that properly, and that will unlock um, that pin. Uh, but one of the cool things that Samsung is allowing you to do since you have that fingerprint sensor is ask for a fingerprint before unpinning. So you would, well, I'll just show you. So we're in there and we're screen pinned. Um, so we would hold these two button down to unlock it. And then you would then have to use your fingerprint to really unlock the device fully. So a nice little, nice little add on there for screen pinning. Uh, all right. So we're almost done with, with settings, but, uh, easy mode for those of you who maybe you're handing your phone over to a grandparent or something, and they, uh, want to just get the basic functionality. Easy mode is what that is. So most of you are going to operate in standard mode, but easy mode, you can see in these screenshots here, it just turns your phone into a simple phone with a clock and just a couple of options. Uh, again, it's supposed to be easy. Um, Another thing I want to talk about though is battery. So all of your battery stats are in here. You can check usage and estimated time remaining and things like that. But I did want to point out that there is power saving mode and ultra power saving mode. So power saving mode, uh, you can see it limits the maximum CPU performance or reduces screen brightness. And it's kind of like your basic uh, power saving mode in case your battery is running a little bit low. Uh, the other thing though you want to keep take a look at probably is ultra power saving mode. This is for those times where you're not going to be around a charger in a really long time, but you still need your phone. And so it turns everything black and white and really limits the functionality of your device completely. Uh, but it will last, it will allow your phone to last a really long time. So you can see I have about eight hours remaining of usage, uh, power saving mode, uh, basically gives me about the same, but ultra power saving mode goes all the way up to 17 and a half hours. So definitely something uh, to consider there. All right, so we're done with settings for a while, back to actually using the phone. So on your home screen setup, when you first jump in here, um, there is actually a flipboard thing just over to the left side. So you would swipe over and you would sort of get a flipboard experience. I've never really been a fan of that. It's kind of like HTC's Blink Feed, except Flipboard just not, doesn't seem to be as good to me. It also, the performance over there just has always been kind of laggy. So if you want to turn that off, you pinch out on home, swipe over, and there's actually a little box up here that you would check, and that's how you turn it off. You can't like grab the screen and delete it or anything like that. It's always there, so you have to just uncheck that box. I know it's kind of a pain, but that's just how it works. Uh, one of the cool things Samsung did though this time around is they allow you to adjust the screen grid size of your home screen. So it defaults to four by four, but let's say you want it to be four by five. You have a specific widget that wants to look a certain way. You can go five by five and really spread it out. It gives you even more area, more, another row to put more icons on. So it's, it's kind of one of those customization features we don't really see uh, OEMs doing, but uh, five by five, you can change your grid and you can see now I've got a whole nother row to put additional stuff on icons, widgets, things like that. Kind of a cool little feature that I wasn't expecting them to see in there. Uh, if we're in here though, these settings and we're in widgets. So I actually do like it that Samsung included a search widgets option. So the widgets area in Android has always been kind of a disaster, at least to me. If you have lots of widgets, you have to just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Uh, but with a search feature, I should just be able to find like say today calendar. And uh, sure enough, it pops right up. So T obviously being at the end of the alphabet, it's going to be at the end of the row. But if I want to find it, I can actually search in there to find widgets, which is actually a really nice feature. So uh, if we jump into the app drawer really quickly, 
Um, you can quickly disable or uninstall a whole bunch of apps at once if you want. So you would just go into edit and immediately once you tap edit, you'll see all the minuses on apps that you can get rid of. And you really just start tapping the minus and they will all start going away. Uh, Samsung's actually opened it up a little bit and allows you to disable most apps on your phone. So it's kind of a cool feature. If you just want to uninstall a single app quickly, you can long press and grab on it and go right up to uninstall and that will uninstall the app. So keep that in mind um, as well. The other thing in there, so they've, they've stripped most of the features and bloat out of uh, the app drawer in terms of functionality. So you really just have edit and you have this A to Z button. And you're going to want to hit this a lot because that sorts everything alphabetically. Uh, the problem is every time you download a new app, it goes to the end of your app drawer. So you're going to want to have to do that every single time you download a new app, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, one app I did want to show you, though, is the Smart Manager. So the Smart Manager app shows how much battery life you have left, how much storage you have left, and you're using if your device is secure through Samsung's Knox and how much RAM you have available. So it, this just might be a good way to look if you're having performance issues or you're concerned about running out of storage. Just one of those apps that quickly give you an overview of your phone. You can also tap this clean all. And to be honest, I have no idea what that's actually doing, um, but it may be worth a shot here or there, although that kind of runs into task manager uh, territory, which is something we definitely don't recommend using. Uh, but it is something to uh, take a look at. Uh, so the other thing we talked earlier about swiping to do screenshots, which we tell you to turn off. So to do screenshots on Samsung devices, you actually hit power and the home button at the same time, and it will take a screenshot. And when it takes that screenshot, it goes right up here into your notifications. And from there, you can actually delete, edit, or share. So Samsung's actually added some functionality there over stock Android, which is kind of nice. Uh, and finally, let's jump back into the settings one more time, scroll all the way to the bottom. Uh, if you ever wanna get into developer stuff or you wanna use ADB or get into tinkering, you needed to, you need to unlock your developer options. So to do that, we always remind you, you go into about phone, about device, and tap on the build number a whole bunch of times, and it will prompt you and say, you need to tap 10 times or so to become a developer. Once you do that, it will unlock developer options. So that's just a tinkering thing. And then because we just like Android, here's the Android version, which sure enough is Lollipop. And if you want to play the Lollipop bug droid, uh, floppy bird game this is how you do it so that is it that was at least 25 tips or tricks for your galaxy s6 uh, if there's anything else you guys want us to show you um, we can certainly do that but that should get you at least going and running your device um, to the best of your ability so uh, for now we are droid life stay tuned our full review is coming soon we're out peace